Emirates flight. 407 was flying from Melbourne to Dubai on March 20, 2009, using a fully loaded Airbus A340. What was meant to be a routine 14-hour flight turned dangerous due to a major mistake by the pilots, putting nearly 300 lives at risk. Late that night, 257 passengers and 18 crew members boarded the plane. Most had come from New Zealand earlier that day. The weather was clear, and the plane, an Airbus A340-500, was known for safety and long-distance travel. Because of the flight's length, four pilots were on board instead of the usual two. They all helped with pre-flight checks and would rotate duties to rest during the flight. The captain had over 8,000 flight hours, including 1,400 on the A340. The first officer had similar total hours but less time on the A340. The relief captain had the most experience, 12,500 hours. Despite all this experience, none of them knew that a serious error was about to make takeoff extremely dangerous. Inside the cockpit, five people were squeezed in, three pilots and two engineers, so the relief first officer waited outside. While the crew talked, the first officer made a big mistake. He entered the wrong takeoff weight into the system that calculates takeoff settings. He was off by 262.5 tons, much lighter than the real weight. He gave the device to the captain, but they skipped a verbal check that might have caught the error. Because of the wrong data, the engines didn't give enough power, and the takeoff speed was too low. The mistake went unnoticed, even though they had a few chances to catch it. At 10.18 p.m., the doors were closed, and seven minutes later, the plane began heading to the runway. At 10.30, it was cleared for takeoff. As they sped down the runway, the plane felt slow, but no one reacted. When they reached the calculated liftoff speed, the captain told the first officer to lift the nose. He pulled back, but the nose didn't rise. The captain repeated the order, and only after pulling harder did the nose start to lift, but the plane still didn't leave the ground. This was the first moment the pilots realized something was seriously wrong. Since they had already reached the rotation speed, it was too late to stop. They had to get the plane in the air somehow. The problem was that the plane was moving about 20 knots too slowly because of the incorrect weight entered earlier. To respond quickly, the captain switched to takeoff go-around thrust, which gives the engines maximum power. But they were rapidly running out of runway. As the engines powered up, the tail of the aircraft hit the runway hard. Sparks flew as the metal scraped along the ground at about 170 miles per hour. The hit was so strong that it damaged part of the flight recorder known as the black box and tore up the bottom of the plane. Some passengers started noticing a strange red glow and smelled something burning, like metal or insulation. They were getting close to the end of the runway, and if the plane didn't lift off in the next few seconds, it would likely crash. Thankfully, about three seconds after the captain set the engines to full power, the plane finally took off. It was already 148 meters past the end of the runway when it got airborne. That was a very close call. But more problems were on the way. The hard hit the aircraft took during takeoff had damaged some of its landing systems. As the plane climbed, a warning appeared on the pilot's screen saying there had been a tail strike. Air traffic control also confirmed this by radio. At that point, the pilots knew they couldn't fly all the way to Dubai and needed to return to Melbourne. But the aircraft was too heavy to land safely. It had about 130 tons of fuel on board. The crew had to quickly figure out how to reduce the plane's weight to the maximum safe landing weight of 280 tons. They were told to climb to 7,000 feet and began flying in circles over Port Phillip Bay in Victoria while dumping fuel into the ocean. To calculate how much fuel they needed to dump, the first officer used the electronic flight bag again. When he opened it, he suddenly realized the huge mistake he had made earlier. He had entered the wrong takeoff weight. But there was no time to dwell on that because another issue was discovered. The relief first officer noticed the aircraft was losing air pressure. The tail had hit the runway so hard that it ripped holes in the fuselage, which meant the plane was no longer sealed. That's a serious issue at high altitudes. The pilot sent out a pan-pan call, an urgent but not life-threatening emergency, and were given priority to land. As the crew circled and dumped fuel, 
they tried to figure out how many loops they'd need to make to reduce their weight. They decided to dump 80 tons of fuel. To make sure there were no more errors, they did three separate performance checks, two with the EFB and one with the aircraft's handbook. Up in the air at 7,000 feet, with 257 passengers and 18 crew on board, the plane had a damaged tail and was losing pressure. The only goal now was to land everyone safely in Melbourne. People on board were clearly worried, so the captain finally made an announcement. He explained that the plane's tail had hit the runway during takeoff, and they were dumping fuel to land safely. At about 11.25 p.m., the crew decided they had dumped enough fuel and began the descent toward Melbourne. But just minutes into the descent, they heard a strange rumble. Then came reports that smoke had been seen, there might be a fire on board. The first officer radioed air traffic control to report the situation and said they would need to land sooner than planned. Emergency fire and rescue vehicles were sent to the runway. Now the crew had to land even faster, making things much harder. There was a real risk they might run off the runway again. As soon as the wheels touched down, the captain slammed on the brakes and reversed the engines to slow the plane down. It was a tense moment, but this time the aircraft came to a stop just before the end of the runway. Flight 407 landed safely on runway 34, one hour and four minutes after takeoff. Rescue teams found no fire and thankfully, no one was hurt. Afterwards, inspections showed that the plane had serious damage underneath the rear part of its body. The lower panels had been torn off by the runway impact. A service panel had come loose and many structural parts in the tail were damaged by the friction and force. An investigation by the ATSB and other aviation safety groups found two major causes. The crew didn't catch the wrong takeoff weight. They didn't notice the poor takeoff performance until it was too late. It also found that the crew didn't follow all their standard procedures which might have helped them catch the error. On top of that, the first officer had changed the first digit of the weight in the master flight plan during the load check, which removed another chance to find the mistake. As a result, Emirates reportedly fired the pilots when they got back to Dubai. Their names were never made public. The airline also changed its procedures. Now, two laptops are required for pre-flight planning to make sure data is entered twice and double-checked. They also started working on a new system that alerts pilots if something is wrong during takeoff. Airbus updated its software too, to detect this kind of mistake, and is working on a system that warns pilots if the numbers entered don't match expected values. The damaged A340 was repaired and returned to service with Emirates until 2014. Flight 407 is a powerful example of why pre-flight checks and correct data are so important. The lessons learned from this incident have led to improvements in aviation safety and help ensure something like this doesn't happen again. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more such videos.